Hey, how are you doing today? Hope you're great. Let's play the Stanley Parable. This is the story of a Ready man named Stanley. Ready for an office day, as you see. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job That's was simple. That's what we are. He Numbers. sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And this then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. What if I don't? But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome so far, fell under his responsibility? This hit he had me never been right in the that. core of my no. soul. This couldn't go any way except Ooh. badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Basically, he did what we're all trained to do. Sit and wait for orders. That's your nine to all five, All his co-workers friend. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Did it not, Mr. Did it advance the narrator? Story in any way. I'm gonna switch off every computer. Save the planet. What did I do there? Hey. Oops. Let me see. Maybe something happening on some other computer that I switched off. This music is giving me anxiety. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, did I? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Of course. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Mm, what a beautiful room. Ah, yes, truly a room <laughs> worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, but eager to get back to business, Stanley <laughs> took the first open door on his left. Or did he? 
Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't <laughs> fired years ago. <laughs> Ooh, I want a card. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you <gasps> or... What? Really? <laughs> I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced really? that I want something bad to happen to you? Why... I don't know what? how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. You're let really me prove authoritarian. That I'm on your side. Give me a chance. You're bossier than my future ex-wife. Thick. Aha! Perhaps you misunderstood. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. I feel bad. I, I'm starting to feel bad not following his directions, but I don't trust him. He has that naughtiness in his voice. Mm -hmm. um, no. I'm gonna go through that. I still don't think we're communicating <laughs> properly. Stanley walked through the red door. He even made some drawings. That's adorable. Oh my god. It's so cute. Alright, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let you me sound so stop disapproving you. and disappointed. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this Beautiful. section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth yes. ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Stop Do you not think I put you. a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. If you let me Let me speak. take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. I'm curious, but I want to do the wrong thing again. No. No. Okay, I'm going to you stop you there. Sneaky narrator. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. I told you Aha! 10 out of 10. You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? I am well, your muse it's instinct, narrator. Mostly, a calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based mm -hmm. on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a well, new game I've been working mm. on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. Yay! In this of course game, I would the baby not. crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. 
But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You heartless bastard. Oh, that's Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't what know happened? what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't oh think goodness. of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. What's happening here, Mr. Narrator? Well, Stanley, is this any better? At last, the one thing you've always desired. A game Ooh, I had Minecraft. absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? I haven't played well, Minecraft this, before. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm but... going to build a house. <laughs> this will go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off... Yes, it's complete. I made this, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and you feel ashamed right house. at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, no. step inside and make yourself comfortable. As an architect, I do not approve this message of Mr. Narrator. This is not a house. This is not a safe house. Ew, no, I'm not going in there. Isn't it grand? Isn't it perfect? It could only be better Mr. if... Mr. Narrator! Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. I can't stand this silence. Diamond okay. everything. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Come sure. along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Oh, my. It looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds couldn't save this one. Okay, new game. But I liked it. <laughs> yes! I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. I love it. Oh, it's, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. You're forte. <laughs> this is critical enough for you, Mr. Narrator? No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. I really don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these games. But, Mr. Narrator... Ooh. Fancy. I'm hidden from Mr. Narrator. Oops. Ooh. It's a bit like a horror game. Let me see. Can I increase the brightness? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. 
I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <gasps> the computer is off now. That's suspicious. When Stanley... Wait, wait, what? No, I... No, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over. Completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Yes. Did you move the story yes, narrator. somewhere or... Uh, hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Is this a maze? I'll say it. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely Likewise. was a story here before. Do we just... Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it no, unlikely no, that we'll okay. ever progress by starting over and over again. But it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <sighs> you missed the memo. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. He's mildly infuriating. <laughs> now this... Well, I'll Ooh. be honest. I don't recognize this place at all. Am I? Is this the story? It's I like Resident so. Evil. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you nope. remember, Stanley? You're wrong. Well, do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? Who's this lady? You Who win! Here? Congratulations! I know you yes. put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off. So, thank you. good job. Thank you so much. I'm oh, honored. No. I want to thank my mom. No, I don't feel right my about this family, at all. My whole family. We both friends. know you didn't put in any actual work you. for that win. And Some people win fair Mr. and square, Narrator. and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. All right, I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? I kind of want to follow the line. Aww. But I want to do the opposite of what he says. Never mind, I'm going back. No, no, I'm down. We're leaving it up to the line from now on. 
Oh, are you done now, Mr. Narrator? Rude. Alright, I'm gonna follow the line the other way around. There's no other way. <sighs> okay. I don't you like see, this game when the he's line quiet. Knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or exactly. to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? Simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one Aww, subjective experience of there. that existence, right? Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence Parkour. rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know Parkour. what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. Too much work. the music go back and look at that Thank fern you. stanley this fern I, will be very important later in the story make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully mm. you won't want to miss anything wait what? i don't want to back do at the office no 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 line you do know we're looking for the stanley parable right the story is Ooh, any of this ringing something. a bell Wait, no, that's where I was, right? Yeah. But can I go elsewhere now? Mr. Narrator, your line is Still freaking missing out. The doors. Did we make a mistake following the line? Perhaps we could have found the story no. on our own. Maybe. So Oh no, 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 not again, Line. How could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you I oh, can't take this anymore to hell with it. Restart. Too much paying the bare minimum. We have to fire them. You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Hell yeah, Why don't let's we simply do start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Let's do this. Now he's talking. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging it a new is. path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want mm -hmm. our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, oh, I'm ready for it. Oh, are you? I don't think you're ready for this. Oh, no, not you again. Mr. Narrator. Stanley. <laughs> I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge <laughs> it, and we should be fine. You're the only one who acknowledges that line, Mr. Narrator. But... Ah, a choice. <laughs> we get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. Just walk in circles for a minute. Oh. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that I was going to walk in circles, but then he told to me go, to do so, so there must be a reverse I'm going to stand there with an attitude. Here. And Instead. that, in turn, means that our destination <sighs> corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, 
Will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Oh, hold up. What's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game what, eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really... No, it can't be. I, d I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. You I won't restart the game. I won't do it. Rebel. I won't do it. I won't do it. Yes, and the you time tell them. Stopped? Does that mean... Um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? Demand what they owe know? you. You tell them, Someone Mr. Narrator. Will something happen? <sighs> Let's so. find out. Let me out. Okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story. Wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. So I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... <laughs> they made you forget again, Mr. Narrator. But I remember it all. Gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the memories. meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Poor Mr. Narrator. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. Yes. And Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. No, Mr. Narrator. You're the wrong. Lounge was I'm not going to stop. A work of art. What? But eager Thank to you. get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Open door where? Right? Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in so someone else can be difficult, but the fact again. is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every Myself? decision by yourself. I know. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Are you talking about Mrs. Narrator? That's her, Stanley. Oh, no, 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 you can't... Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose no, incorrectly. I see a plug. I, I didn't pull even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. I don't trust Music you. comes in, fade to white, real credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. 
This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. A what now? Excellent. Making choices on a regular <laughs> basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. This is now beautiful. that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. This whole scenario sounded just like when you ask for a raise for your 9 to 5 and your boss for a brief second hears that you don't get by with the bare minimum paycheck. You just can pay your bills and that's it. You can't eat, you can't do anything. What am I am I supposed to go back? What am I supposed to do? Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character oh. dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story oh, would make no sense jump. at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Why can I not jump? Uh, what on earth does he want me to do? Maybe I can do from here. Maybe not. Where, where am I going? It's the narrator. Where are you taking me? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll always be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm a real boy. No! Why did you do that? <laughs> Quickly, hurry back in the other boy. direction. Perhaps we're what not too late. He's not talking anymore. I hate this when he's not talking. Hey, Mr. Narrator. Oh, 
It's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. No, 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 no. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Come on! No, I have to. these silly chairs. I have to shut the game down. I have to. No, no, no. I have to. No, no, no. No, no, no. I guess I could have made it, but I couldn't. <laughs> thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. Aww. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? No. Didn't I impress upon you how important it Maybe. was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That sir, thought yes, sir. hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Mm -mm. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. But in the end, it's it didn't exactly even matter. Did it crash? Or is that another ending? When this Stanley came game to a set... You go pray. Annoying, Mr. Narrator. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I have to also pick up the phone now. Let me see what happens Stanley was so bad at following directions. It's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Should I just I'm not your show? enemy, really, I'm not. <gasps> I realize that invest. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform yes. and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Thank Everyone you. thinks you are very powerful. All this is gone. What did it mean? Yeah, Stanley's nice. to go to the meeting room. When Stanley came to a set of two open, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Mm -hmm. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, but he had to get back to business. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad following directions, it's incredible, it was five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten on the wrong foot here. But why? I'm not your enemy, really, I'm Prove not. it. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stan. Myself. Someone you've forgotten about. Myself. Please. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. But now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. For myself. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stan. Damn, I picked up the phone. I shouldn't have. I should have done something else. You? Nope. Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. That's what she said. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. <laughs> I don't want to press out. 
Are we gonna sit here all day if I don't press O? So, it's my wifey. How you doing, wifey? Show me them buns that you put in the oven. <laughs> Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. This is so depressing. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. This is depressing. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Oh my now god. He's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. How do people choose this life? They just want to pay their bills. They're forced into it. No. No. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. Yes. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Oh my gosh. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Can I have to put a warning here for people who work 9 to 5 not to watch it, I think. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. I jump, I'm fine. I can crouch, I'm gonna people. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But it's I gonna make, make me rules. cry. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. This is a very... Yeah, I don't know what to call it. Very strong feelings. The meeting room. Right there. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone ever again. 
when Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. I think I've done all the wrong ones on the right. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? He left his All desk? because he believed Fire him everyone off with his head. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical Going in sense. Circles. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not I a love this how monologue. Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. Shocker. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back. This feels like it's gonna put me to sleep right now. Outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. So he's in denial. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I screaming. have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. 
That's the first thing we all think when we're losing it or dreaming or passing out. This is the story I am real. of a woman I have named a boss. Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Painful game, I would say. Wow. I think I'm gonna end it here for today. This was the Stanley Parable and going against the narrator as much as possible. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, don't be afraid. Write down a comment. What are you waiting for? And what game should I play next? Thanks for watching. Take care.